Good morning. Welcome to Cortland United Church, those that are here as well as those that are online. Thank you for joining us today. For our announcements on the back of your bulletin, upcoming activities within the life of our church, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. If you're in town, stop by 7 o'clock. We'll be doing the imposition of ashes. It's a time of reflection and prayer. And so this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, you are invited, and we will do that here in the sanctuary. Other announcements, we do have our board meeting. If Our board has been meeting over Zoom. If you're interested, you are invited. So we'll meet this Thursday, 7 o'clock, over Zoom, and we'll send out the Zoom invites this week. Do we have other announcements you want to lift up at this time? Any other announcements? Yes, Linda. No. Okay, so we're not going to go downstairs after worship today because pancake feed is across. So if you, let's go have fellowship over there. Thank you. Any other announcements? If not, let's stand and greet one another. Make sure everyone feels welcome this morning. Good morning. If you want to grab your green book and turn to 3043, we're going to start this morning by singing together, You, Lord, are both Lamb and Shepherd. And if you're willing and able, would you please stand as we sing number 3043. Jesus, 
Worthy is our cosmic Christ. Worthy your defeat and victory. Worthy still your peace and strife. You the everlasting instant. You are both dead and life. And if you turn to 3089, let's join in singing, O Living God, number 3089. O Living God, I long to see you. glory to see you there in holy beauty O Lord Almighty God living Christ I love you O living God I long to praise you and voice with all creation to worship you for tender mercy O Lord Almighty God living Christ I love you O living God I soon will see you face to face in all your glory. I'll worship you in endless wonder. O Lord, Almighty God, living Christ, I love you. Turn to 3056. Let's join in singing Jesus, the light of the world. Number 3056. See the bright and morning star, Jesus, the light of the world. He has risen in our hearts, Jesus, the light of the world. Walk in the light, beautiful light, come where his love and his mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. He's the lamp that lights our way. Jesus, the light of the world. Step by step and day by day. Jesus, the light of the world. Walk in the light beautiful light come where his love and his mercy are bright shine all around us by day and by night jesus the light of the world no more darkness no more night jesus the light of the world he will shine forever bright, Jesus, the light of the world. Walk in the light, beautiful light, come where his love and his mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. You may be seated. 
Let us join together in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin, if you would respond in the bold print. As God called to Moses from the mountain, as Jesus called the disciples to climb with him to the peak of another mountain, as the disciples stood in awe at the sound of God's voice, let us join together in the opening prayer. God of the mountaintop and of the plain. We remember today the transfiguration of Jesus, glorious, mysterious, and shimmering with light. You know our hearts, our triumphs, and our disasters. Take us as we are, love us as we are, join with us and transform us into your holy ones. Amen. At this time, may we have the youth and the children please come forward for the children's sermon. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about things glowing. When you say things glowing, what glows? Uh, flashlight. flashlight. Glow sticks. Glow sticks. Light. light, the sun. What else glows? Yeah. The stars. You guys come up with some great stuff. Well, there is a scripture today about Jesus appearing, and all of a sudden he is glowing. So I've given you guys these before, but I'm going to do it again. These are lights. So grab one of those. You can put them on your fingers. And grab one. And I got a bunch here. And the idea is, is they're supposed to glow. And they experience the disciples. Oh, help me here. Help me here. Get those out. Yep. Now punch those out. One, two, three. You guys do that. I think I got another one there. There we go. Thank you. All right, colors, got one, everybody got one? There we go, there we go, there we go. We're gonna do one more, we got one more, we got one more, we got a package. There we go, I'll get, there we go. All right, so the idea is, there we are, that we experience God. Now, I imagine, for me, I have an imaginary wall where I put times where I remember I experienced God. Now, where can we experience God? Church. Church. Bible. Bible. Where else can we experience God? Everywhere. Yeah? I mean, yeah. At your home. At your home? Let's ask them. Where do you experience God? Everywhere. Everywhere? Special places? When you're doing what? Driving. Driving. Walking. Walking. What's that? Mountaintop. When you're playing golf, <laughs> there are times we experience God. I think we all, when we drive, we walk, we all have times when we do stuff, and then all of a sudden you think, oh my gosh, I know God's with me. And the idea is, is we have these mountaintop experiences, and you need to hold on to them because they will never go away. And you can always remember those times, those special experiences, because they can happen every day, but we do have special times when we experience God. And then it was this, so the great story today about Jesus glowing because they were in the presence of God. All right, pray, pray with me before you go back. Dear God, may we experience you. Oh, man, thanks for coming up. There are suckers on the way back, and there's one right here. That's for you. Oh, let me look. I'm not sure. If you take your black book and turn to 2103, since this is Transfiguration Sunday, we're going to join in singing, We Have Come at Christ's Own Bidding, number 2103 in the black book. Does everybody have a black book in their hip view? <laughs> We have come at Christ's own bidding to this high and holy place where we wait with hope and longing for some 
token of God's grace. Here we pray for new assurance that our faith is not in vain. Searching like those first disciples for a sign both clear and plain. Light breaks through our clouds and shadows, splendor bathes the blessed joined word. Moses and Elijah marvel as the heavenly voice is heard. Eyes and hearts behold with wonder how the law and prophets meet. Christ with garments drenched in brightness stands transfigured and complete. Strengthened by this glimpse of glory, fearful lest our faith decline, we like Peter find it tempting to remain and build a shrine. But true worship gives us courage to proclaim what we profess, that our daily lives may prove us people of the God we bless. Good morning. The first scripture reading this morning comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 to 21, and that is found on page 226, if you'd like to follow along. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the days dawn and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The second reading comes from Matthew chapter 17, verses one through nine, found on page 17 in the New Testament. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved, and him, and with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, 
Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. And this ends the readings. Thank you, Mary. We can be in awe. When the piano sparks the letter C, our inner ear vibrates exactly 256 times a second. You have 50,000 thoughts each day. When you flex your hand, there are 70 different muscles just in your hand. And how many of them hurt when you do that? On the surface of your body, there are as many bacteria on your body as there are people on the surface of the planet. We can be in awe. There was a small child, and the small child was hitting. The small child was angry. And the parent says, and we've said this before, use your words. Michael and I yesterday went and saw Ant-Man, the movie, went and saw Ant-Man. Before every movie, you sit for probably a half an hour, and they show you preview of movies that are about ready to come up. And if you're like us, when a, movie, a preview is done, you look at each other and say yes or no. We're going to see that or we're not going to see that. We're getting a preview today of what's going to happen in Jesus' life as we're about ready to walk into the season of Lent. Jesus is saying it over and over again, and we're experiencing it over and over again. And yet sometimes the disciples, and we do the same thing, sometimes we forget it. Because between now and Easter, there is supposed to be a transformation. There was a worker who was working at a house where people went to make changes in their lives. Uh, Aaron Rodgers right now, the football players, in four days of darkness, we're hoping some transformation will help with him. But for the rest of us, the season of Lent is, is 40 days and, and, and what, seven Sundays, that transformation is supposed to take place. This person who was working in this transformation house, people would come and they would talk in circles, and he told his wife when he was done with the first day, these are some of the ugliest people I have ever been around. After the first six months, he came back and said, these are some of the most beautiful people I have ever been around. The transformation is just not of Jesus on the mountain. The transformation also happens with us over and over and over again. We have an experience with God, and it's not just once. It happens over and over and over again. We have those times that we would like to have time stand still. Maybe it was at a church camp. Maybe, maybe it was on a path where you walking and the sunset was coming. Maybe you were laughing with a group of friends. Maybe it was at a church service. And at that moment, you connected your thoughts and God's thoughts, and your heart was warmed, and you knew at that moment, I am in the presence of God. And it was, it was your mountaintop experience. And sometimes we just want to stay there. Think about the places where you would want to go and just stay. Give me a beach, and I could just stay. Give me a gathering of friends. When, you know, you start laughing and it hurts so much, because you're like, we, we just want to stay. Jesus in some way has this experience, and then the challenge of the disciples is how do we then have those experiences and live out the rest of our life? And some of us, not you, we become cynical. Really cynical. 
to the point we don't think we can get along together anymore. We don't think God's presence happens anymore. And then we get the gift of today. Today is the gift where it's Transfiguration Sunday. It's always the Sunday right before Ash Wednesday. They have the same scripture every year. And it's of Jesus, and he takes Peter, James, and John, and they go up into the mountain. And in the Bible, they use this example all the time, the presence of God most often happened on the top of a mountain. And there they go. And Jesus shines. He glows. And before him are Peter, James, I'm sorry, Peter, James, and John, and then there is Moses and Elijah and Jesus. Moses is the law, and Elijah is the prophets, and Jesus is the Savior. And the voice of God appears, and the voice of God said, this is my son with whom I am pleased. And then he says, listen to him. Listen to him. What an experience. Holy cow. And then all of a sudden, Peter, James, and John look, and everybody else is gone. And it's the real world again. And I loved their response. Let's build something right here where we can come back here, and this will be a sacred space. And that wasn't the goal. The goal is is to take those experiences and use them every place we go. In The Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins climbed a tree, and in The Hobbit he looked over the tree and there was beauty all over, and he said, it is good that I am here. The same thing happens for us. We have those experiences with God. There was a nurse, and this nurse, they noticed when she was done with her room, the patients felt better. (laughs) And and so they, they did a little study on this nurse, and this nurse always usually dealt with the dying patients. And what they discovered was, is even though a patient knew they were dying, She would talk with them, and she'd hold their hand, and she'd listen, and she'd explore. Because even in those moments, people need to experience God. So, as we see glowing Jesus here. What we know is, is in the creation stories we talked about, there is darkness and there is light. And, and I don't think we need to uh, set aside the importance of darkness. Here's what I mean by that is, um, if you're going to take a picture, those that love photography, you know the shadow matters. The contrast matters. For we all have experiences, and sometimes they last a long time, where things are not going well, where we go back to that wall that we have of those experiences, and and we grab onto it because of the darkness. Darkness matters. And yet we get a preview today, and the preview is of what can happen. Now, some of you may not know, there is a, there's a show out there, and it's, it's, uh, it's called Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday is a show, and it's the show of, um, oh, what's, what's the, the regular show that she's usually on? Adam's Family. And, and Wednesday's the dark one. <laughs> Wednesday is all black. She's supposed to be depressed. And they have Wednesday going to school, and everybody else is light on the dance floor. Everybody else, and they have them dressed in white, except for Wednesday. And what the story is, is Wednesday has incredible insights, and she starts really dancing. And everybody else sees this person in darkness, and she comes alive. Everybody's doing the Wednesday dance. I'm just telling you, it's out there right now. 
even in our cynicism, the same thing can happen. In us is life, and things happen to us where we feel the presence of God through relationships, through nature, through God's presence just getting to us. And we get, we get a preview, and today that's what it is. Jesus is giving them a preview of about what's about ready to happen. Uh, there was someone who was going to go see the uh, Star Wars movie, and right before they walked into the movie, their friend told them what the ending was going to be. Ruined the movie for them. So this, this friend gave this person who said that to them a puzzle, and it was a Star Wars with all these pieces in it, and they took out the piece in the very middle and kept it. When they were about done with a puzzle, they couldn't finish it. They said, what happened? He said, oh, I'm sorry, I ruined your ending just like you ruined mine. Well, what we know is, is in a few weeks, we're going to be working our way towards Easter, and there is an incredible, incredible ending. Um, in the Harry Potter mo movies, uh, uh, who's the person, what, Robbins, who wrote it? Um, J.K.? Yeah, uh, she was finishing what they called the goblets of fire, and there was a young woman. And for her make a wish, she asked if she could get the the transcript before she died of the goblets of fire book. And uh, before they got to the writer, she had passed away. And so here's what they did: is is the writer of the movie put her name in the book. And there is a character called Natalie McDonald because she put her in the story because she knew she wanted to know the end of the story and she died before the end of the book was even written. Our name is in the story. As we walk through these weeks heading ourselves to Easter, it's our story of our experiences with God where we open up and we name them and we keep them. And we need them. We need the presence of God. Amen. You ever notice how some of the most profound lessons that Jesus teaches, he teaches through Peter? Because here they're on this mountaintop, and Peter wants to build these dwelling places for Jesus and Moses and Elijah, kind of putting them all on the same level. And then the voice comes, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Definitely a strong message there, I think. If you take your black book and turn to 2102, uh, let's join in singing swiftly past the clouds of glory. And if you're willing and able, would you please stand as we sing number 2102 in the Black Book. Swiftly past the clouds of glory, heaven's voice the dazzling light. Moses and Elijah vanish, Christ alone commands the height. Peter, James, and John fall silent, turning from the summit's rise. Downward toward the shadowed valley, where their Lord has fixed his eyes. Glimpsed and gone the revelation, they shall gain and keep its truth, not by building on the mountain any shrine or sacred booth. But by following the Savior through the valley to the cross, and by testing faith's resilience through betrayal, pain, and loss. 
Lord, transfigure our perception with the purest light that shines and recast our life's intentions to the shape of your designs till we seek no other glory than what lies past Calvary's hill and our living and our dying and our rising by your will. You may be seated. It's a time within our worship we lift up our joys and concerns from our community of faith. Do you have joys and concerns you'd like to lift up at this time? Okay. My friend uh, who had a son with a terrible heart and a lot of other problems has now been told he will not be eligible for a heart transplant because of the other health issues. His name is Trenton. If you could please pray for Trenton and for the family. Uh, they're praying for miracles now. So mm -hmm. it's our prayers for Trenton. Yeah, he's Thank probably you. 20, 21. Oh, my. Thank you, Kay. Other joys and concerns, yes. Landa, yeah, great to have you here. Landa, good to have you here. Other joys and concerns, yes. So from Maxine has moved to the Waterford, and it's on 40th and Pine Lake. And uh, there are two buildings there. I thought it was Savannah Pines, which is right next door, and then it's the, it's the corner one. So beautiful place. So thank you. I did get a call from Bob Baker late last night. Bob has some needs, so if anybody wants to, he has, needs to move some stuff again. So if anybody wants to work with Bob, he's, not, I, he's in a community south of Beatrice somewhere, and he's got an apartment he needs to get some stuff out of. So if anybody wants to jump on that, let me know. Any other joys and concerns you want to lift up? If not, then, if John and Kay would lead us as we prepare our hearts for prayer. And we're on number 3137 in the green book. Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. Let not my doubts nor my darkness speak to me. Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. Let my heart always welcome your love. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. We are thankful, O oh God, for this moment where we stop just for a second and we lift up our hearts and minds to you in a moment of prayer. We know that you are all around us. And as we lift up our joys and concerns, those spoken as well as those on our hearts, We'd ask that you would inspire us, O oh God. We know there are needs within our own neighborhood, within our work, within our own families. May we be inspired, O oh God, to reach out in love and concern. 
and as people who have been loved and forgiven. Let us now all join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now receive our tithes and our offerings. He is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able. More than able to make me what he wants me to be. together in the offertory prayer which is printed in your bulletin. Let us not keep our treasures stored on mountaintops, but pour them out so they might be tra transform all those who find themselves in the valleys of hunger, of loss, of loneliness, and of injustice. This we ask in your name. turn your black book to number 2070 let's close this morning by singing together he is exalted number 2070 give me just a second john because i just realized there's a page missing so i think i've got it in this other book so hang on i'm looking quick hallelujah thank you jesus because i'm like okay I'm, I'm good at a little bit of your stuff but not that good <laughs> sorry about that he is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. Exalted, the King is exalted on high. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord. His truth shall reign, heaven and earth, rejoice in His holy name. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. 
He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. Let us go forth now knowing that God leads us into our own ministry. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.